Because like I said, all the material that I've been sharing with you here today comes straight out of this program, and there's nothing I'd like more than to be able to help you make this journey from that pretty tough spot that I know a lot of you are probably in right now to this place that we've been talking about called peace of mind. I'm pretty sure that every one of you listening here today probably wants your loved one's treatment to be successful. And if you haven't picked up by now, that's a topic that I'm pretty passionate about. I really want your treatment experience to be successful. And what I've done with Rehab Works is I've taken my 20 years of being a direct treatment provider to clients and then 10 more years of working directly with families all for the specific goal of improving treatment outcomes. And I got really creative and I put all this together in a way that can be easily delivered to families, both from a logistical standpoint and from an affordable standpoint. And the whole reason I do this is like I said earlier, there's nothing I hate to see more than to watch a family go through a failed treatment experience, especially when there's some simple things that could have been done to avoid it. And that's why I created Rehab Works. So let's take a quick look at this. We'll start off with a big overview. What is it? It's an online course. It's got videos, written material. It gives you some great worksheets for applying the material. And you even get coaching support from me. Who's it for? It's for families who are anywhere in the process of addressing a substance use issue with a loved one. Whether they're currently in treatment, or they've been through treatment but things aren't going well, or if you're just in the initial stages of addressing a problem, this can be just as helpful for you. So this can be for parents, spouses, adult siblings, or could even be for adult children who have a parent in treatment. Where do we do this? From the convenience of your own home on your favorite mobile device. So that means you can even be working on it from your phone while you're sitting in your car waiting to pick your kids up from soccer or volleyball practice. And when do we do this? The beauty of this program is you can start immediately. You don't have to wait for the counselor to call and schedule your first family session or wait for your first education group or family weekend. You can take control of what you're learning and when you learn it. And a lot of people love the fact that they can work on this around their own schedule. And then why rehab works? Again, the whole purpose of this program is to help you give your loved one the best chance possible for treatment success. Okay, so that's an overview of the course. Now let's take a closer look at how this is all structured. The entire program is based on a framework that includes three specific components. So the first component is education. That's the module we've been talking about where you're going to learn what the clients are learning about what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder and what recovery looks like. Then the second component is about setting boundaries. So in other words, we look at the impact that substance use has had on the family system, and we give you tools for setting boundaries and restoring family balance. And then the final component is about measuring treatment progress. We teach you what goes into a typical treatment process, and then more specifically, we're going to show you how to identify exactly where your loved one is in their own process. And so if we go back to this first component, the result of becoming educated is going to be empowerment. Just like the old phrase, knowledge is power. And when we apply that knowledge specifically to looking at how substance use has affected the family system, that's going to allow us to take action. And the action here is going to be setting boundaries that are going to support the treatment process. Then finally, when we're clear about what treatment should look like and we're setting boundaries that support the treatment process, the underlying principle of the third component here is efficacy. In other words, how well are we using the treatment process and are we getting maximum benefit out of it? Then finally, you can see how all of these things working together are going to add up to our ultimate goal of treatment success. So the course is divided into three specific learning modules that correspond with this framework. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you inside and let you see what actual users have said about each of these modules. When I first created Rehab Works, I beta tested it for 10 months in an adult residential treatment facility. So all the families of the clients there were using Rehab Works. And I included surveys at the end of each module where I asked the family members to identify what parts of the material they found to be most helpful. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you some of those responses because there really isn't any better way to show you exactly what you can expect to get out of this program than by looking at these actual user results.
So here's module one. And again, this is the education piece where we teach you everything you need to know about what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder. We're not going to be arguing about what it means to have a problem because we're going to clear up all the common areas of misinformation and denial and make sure that everybody's on the same page. So here's some survey samples where we asked what material from module one did you find most helpful? So we've got explanation of how addiction is a brain disorder, understanding about the importance that marijuana is not something they can continue to use, hold them accountable that complete abstinence is required from everything, not just the drug of choice, the importance of engagement and recovery activities to prevent relapse, the explanation of the differences between psychological addiction and physical dependence. This helped me to understand the situation better. Now that one's a direct reference to how this module addresses marijuana denial. Because in a lot of cases these days, one of the first things we need to clear up is that marijuana doesn't cause the same kind of physical dependence that some other drugs do, like heroin or Xanax. And this ends up being one of the biggest reasons that people think you don't get addicted to marijuana. Because they can go a couple weeks without using it and not have the same kind of severe withdrawal symptoms that we'd see with a heroin user, for example. There's more to addiction than just whether a person's physically dependent or not, and this module explains all that. Then this last one says, I thought rehab was simply detoxing from substances. Had no idea it's a primary issue to deal with first. Have to treat it first before progress can be made on other issues the person is dealing with. I remember when I read this one, I was like, whoa, that's a really important thing to understand, that treatment is more than detox. If the family doesn't understand what treatment is or how it works, there's definitely going to be a gap between the client, the family, and the treatment team. But here's a perfect example of how we bridge that gap by getting the information to the family right away. So then module two is where we start looking at the family's role in treatment success. And the goal here is to restore family balance by giving you tools for setting healthy boundaries. And this is going to result in what we call treatment accountability. In other words, the client's going to end up taking responsibility for his or her own treatment as opposed to us trying to convince them to take treatment seriously. Some of you might be familiar with that dynamic. So here's what people had to say about what material from module two did you find most helpful? I really understand now how important family participation is, setting boundaries and not being afraid to say that doesn't feel like recovery. I'll apply these when she says it's just weed. To attend all the therapy sessions and be an active participant in her recovery, how to not have wiggle room and to set firm expectations and boundaries. I really like the log we can use to document progress and identify if things are going well for recovery or not. Importance of setting boundaries, making the client take responsibility for their recovery, identifying defense mechanisms. Most helpful, the two examples of successful treatment and how they relate. The need for the family to be actively involved and stop enabling. So that's module two, and you can get a sense of all the boundary work that we're doing there. And then module three is where we talk about creating a solid foundation for recovery. And this is where we use the stages of change material that we looked at in the training today. But we go a lot deeper, and we end up using this as the basis for a specific tool that I give you in this module for measuring treatment progress and making sure that we don't end up with any cracks in the foundation. And we use what I call the three pillars of recovery as a framework for understanding what an effective recovery plan should look like. So here's some of the survey responses from Module 3. Again, what material did you find most helpful? The three pillars of recovery was really helpful. Now I understand what her recovery plan should look like. The importance of setting a foundation, not skimping through the stages of change, and having a realistic perspective of how long the treatment process takes. Identifying red flags, awareness of factors that lead to a shaky foundation, discharge doesn't mean that treatment's over, the importance of IOP. The relapse prevention plan felt like a very big and important part of this module. I really like the idea of the slippery slope and the taking off the training wheels too soon analogy. 
I will definitely use the transition checklist ideas to look for any kind of cracks in the foundation before he leaves treatment. So you can see here just how much this course covers, and I think you can also get a good idea of just how much having access to material like this can change a family's entire treatment experience. It's really not hyperbole to say that in a lot of cases, this can literally make the difference between treatment success and failure. Relatively simple stuff, like understanding that there's a difference between detox and treatment, or knowing that, yes, you can be addicted to marijuana even if you're not physically dependent on it. That ends up being one of the most common power struggles we see in treatment today. And it also ends up being one of the biggest reasons for poor treatment outcomes. But you can see how easy it is to avoid that with just a little well-placed information and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, so as far as how the course is delivered, first of all, each module includes about an hour worth of videos. So there's a total of about three hours of videos for the entire course. Now these are all short, fun videos that make it really easy to go through. They're all under five minutes, and if I do say so myself, I think that people sort of like them. Because when I made them, I didn't just stick a camera up in front of me and start talking to it. I actually took the time and scripted them all out, animated them, I used a lot of nice graphics, and the bottom line is I think people like them and find them to be pretty engaging. Then there's also a fair amount of written material that you get with the course. And what I did is I took excerpts from Rehab Works. And remember when I talked about when people started reading my book and I realized that they still needed a little more guidance in terms of how to apply it to their real life situations? Well, that's what I did with these custom PDFs that are included in the course. I took excerpts from the book, but then I added additional commentary to really bring them alive and show you how to apply this to your particular circumstances. So you get all these custom PDFs. You can read them online, or you can download them and print them out, put them in a binder. Some people like to have the hard copy in their hands, makes it easier to go back and review. But then we get to the real meat of this program, and that's all the worksheets you get that really help you take the material, apply it to your circumstances, and actually give you tools that you can use as part of your treatment support. You heard several references to the worksheets in those surveys that I just read. One person said she really liked the recovery log. That was a reference to this assignment here, where you keep a log of your observations of how treatment's going based on the simple premise of it either feels like recovery or it it doesn't feel like recovery. And what this assignment does is it gives you a clear, right there in black and white, objective roadmap of your loved one's treatment progress. And this comes in pretty handy when we're starting to look at discharge planning and how things are feeling as far as how treatment's going. You can be sitting in a family therapy session and just pull this out and you don't have to say a word. The check marks tell the story of how treatment's going. We'd hope that by the end of treatment, the majority of the checks are going to be on the feels-like recovery side. But if they're not, that could be an indicator of some cracks in the foundation. And then the beauty of this is that it's an ongoing tool. I've got families I've been working with for a couple years that are still using this. So that's the recovery log. Then you also heard someone refer to the transition checklist worksheet. That's a tool that helps you understand what an effective discharge plan should look like. And you can end up using this for discussion on how things are looking when it comes time for discharge planning. So you can see here that there's a bunch of worksheets that cover different topics, from enabling to dealing with resistance, how substance use has affected the family, to also helping you sort out your own schedule as far as participating in treatment. It even gives you a place to vent about how you're feeling about having to do all this. And so this is all about being proactive in your loved one's treatment. This is the kind of work you can be doing that one, is totally within your control, and two, can have a huge impact as far as improving the chances for treatment success. So before I answer a few questions and show you how you can get signed up for this, let me give you one more example of how this works. Brandon here was a client of mine. I did his evaluation and I ended up referring him to residential treatment. He was 19, his drug of choice was marijuana. And because I was already working with him, I was able to give his mother rehab works right away. And she completed the entire course within like the first week that he was there in treatment. I know that she literally did module one the same day that he checked into treatment. 
So that means that from day one, she had a good understanding of what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder, and in particular, she was prepared for dealing with marijuana denial. Then by day three or four, she'd learned about setting boundaries and making the client take responsibility for treatment. And by the end of that first week, she already had a good understanding of what the treatment plan should look like. So I got a text message from her one day, and she just left a family therapy session, and the message said, Brandon says he's homesick and he wants to come home. He's also saying that because he just smokes pot, it's not a problem, and he's not as bad as everyone else there. Then her message went on to say, thanks for helping me become an educated consumer. He's not going anywhere. So the first thing I'm going to say here is that this is not an uncommon situation for families to find themselves in, especially these days with the marijuana issue that we were just talking about. But let's take a look here at how Rehab Works ended up helping Brandon's mom know how to handle this situation and ultimately avoid what probably would have turned into a failed treatment episode had she let him discharge before he was ready to go. So we're going to look at this in terms of what we call treatment planning. This is how counselors write up treatment plans. We identify problems, then what the goal is for each of the problems, and then the interventions are what we're going to do to accomplish the goal. So if we think of this in terms of family treatment planning, we can point to specific content from Rehab Works to use as interventions for addressing some of these specific problems. So here we got problem number one, which is Brandon doesn't think he has a problem because it's only marijuana. Okay, we're going to have mom watch video five from module one. That's going to teach her that just because he doesn't go through physical withdrawal when he doesn't have his pot, that doesn't mean it's not a problem for him. And then that same video goes on to help her understand that it's not a logical argument for him to say that because it's just marijuana, he's not as bad as the other people there. He has a substance use disorder and it needs to be treated just like everyone else there, regardless of their drug of choice. Then problem two is he's homesick and he wants to come home. So here we're going to have mom watch video two from module three, which is about using the stages of change to identify exactly where a client is in their treatment process. And that video in particular is the one that's going to teach her that skipping stages is what leads to cracks in the foundation, and also that it's not uncommon for clients to think that they're further along in the process than they really are, which is exactly what was occurring in this situation. And then if we combine the two problems of he doesn't think it's a problem because it's only marijuana and he's homesick and he wants to come home, we're going to have mom use the transition checklist worksheet in module three so that she can be really clear about what being prepared for discharge should look like and being able to see where he is from the perspective of the stages of change. And as she said in her text, by becoming an educated consumer, she realized that he wasn't ready to go. And so to sum up how she used Rehab Works to turn what could have easily become a poor treatment outcome into a successful treatment outcome, we're going to see that first of all, she got educated about substance use disorder, which included knowing how to respond to his denial about marijuana. Then she got tools for setting healthy boundaries, and she was able to hold the client accountable to taking responsibility for his own treatment. And then she used the stages of change to identify that he wasn't as far along in his treatment as he wanted her to believe. And then finally, the transition checklist worksheet helped her understand what an appropriate discharge plan was going to look like. And as a result, what ended up happening was, instead of leaving after two and a half weeks, he ended up staying there for a total of about eight weeks, and mom worked together with the treatment team to make sure they had a really good continuing care plan in place the day he left treatment. And she also used that transition checklist worksheet to make sure that he was committed to the plan. And the bottom line is this turned out to be a successful case. This guy did really well. But you can also see just how important the family's role can be in determining treatment outcomes. This could have easily gone a different way if she hadn't have made that effort to be proactive in her son's treatment. And this type of scenario was happening all the time in treatment.
If you hear him say, I'm not as bad as everyone else here, you're going to know exactly what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder and the implications that holds for treatment and recovery. If they say, I'll quit the hard stuff, but I can still smoke pot, you're going to know all about cross-addiction and the difference between abstinence versus switching to other chemicals. If they say pot doesn't cause me any problems, you're going to know exactly how to respond to marijuana misinformation and denial. If they say I can be around my friends and not smoke, you're going to be well informed about the vulnerability to triggers in early recovery and where this fits with relapse prevention planning. Again, if they say I need to focus on my depression, you're going to understand about the relationship between addiction and underlying issues and the implications for treatment there. If IOP is being recommended as part of the discharge plan from residential treatment and they say, I don't need to go to IOP, you're going to understand the importance of following through with the continuum of care. If they say, I'm fine now, I don't need any more treatment, you're going to know exactly how the treatment process works and how to tell where they are in their own process. If they say, AA is not for me, you're going to be able to say, that's fine, but tell me, what are you going to be doing for the peer-based support part of your plan? If they give you sort of a vague, I'm working on my steps, when you ask them about what they're doing for their recovery, you're going to know exactly what goes into work in a recovery program and what you would expect to see from somebody who's doing that. So if you find yourself on the receiving end of any of these statements, and there's a good chance you will, you're going to have everything you need right there at your fingertips for knowing how to respond in a healthy, effective way that's going to support the treatment plan. And even if you don't run into any of these specific scenarios, this is going to turn out to be just a great review module for the course in general. Because one thing you're going to find is that the material in this course is definitely not one and done. You're going to want to go back and keep going through this stuff over and over as your treatment process unfolds. Because the way this typically works is that there's usually going to be something that comes up just about every other week that you're going to want to go back and review about. And this bonus module is going to make that a lot easier for you. Okay, so we looked at a couple case studies, and we looked at survey responses from actual course users. There's one more testimonial here that I want to share with you. Jenny W., the mother of a 25-year-old heroin addict, said, I wish we would have had this the first time our daughter went through rehab. It could have helped us avoid a bad relapse. Jenny's daughter was another client of mine who came to me after her second time in residential treatment. And that's when Jenny started using Rehab Works, and she started to see what she'd been missing in her previous treatment support. Thus, her statement of, I wish we would have had this sooner. And I've got to tell you, the reason I'm sharing this one with you is because, you know, I showed you all those survey responses I have, right? Well, I literally have hundreds of those. And if we took the time to go through them all, I could show you that that response of wish we would have had this the first time in treatment comes up a lot. And that's the whole reason I'm presenting all of this today. I really don't want you to end up being in that position of wishing you'd done something different or wishing that there was something you could have known before something bad happens. Okay, folks, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, if you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box here before I close this out, and I'll look for them and get back to you by email. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you hanging in here this entire time with me. We've obviously covered a ton of stuff, and I really hope this has been helpful. I think you can probably tell by now that I'm really serious about wanting to help families avoid a bad treatment experience. And I'll go ahead and bring this slide up one more time just to remind you that even the best treatment centers with the best family programs, unless they're checking you in along with the clients, there's always going to be the potential for gaps where important things can fall through the cracks. And what I'm offering you here through Rehab Works is an opportunity for you to take control of your own destiny with regard to how your loved one's treatment goes. And you can end up turning one of the most challenging times in your life into one of the best things that could ever happen for you and your family. So again, the link is in the chat box. You can go over there right now and get started today. And again, do me a favor and type a yes in the chat box if you are going to sign up so I can watch for you. And I'll look forward to seeing you in there. Thanks so much, everybody.